now we have Dr. Katherine Wagner from Kennedy Krieger Institute to talk about the clinical picture. Hello, it's wonderful to see so many old friends and meet new ones here today. Um, we're going to switch gears now and talk uh, about the clinical aspects of FSHD. So uh, not many people in this room uh, don't know that the traditional uh, muscles uh, that are involved in FSHD for what it gets its name, uh, the face, the muscles of scapular fixation, and the muscles overlying the humerus bone. Uh, what you may not be aware of are the other muscles that are profoundly affected in FSHD and um, are probably affected more early, in fact, than the face, scapular, and humeral uh, muscles. So uh, what you're looking at here um, is a whole body MRI, and I'll use the pointer uh, to my right. So this is a whole body MRI, and muscles um, are listed uh, from the neck uh, to the ankle. And red means the muscle is affected, and white means not affected. And so you can see uh, like this big group of red here, muscles affected. Those are muscles of the abdomen and the, the paraspinal muscles. And those are some of the muscles that are affected most early and severely in FSHD. And here, down th these uh, uh, um, uh, red muscles are the hamstring muscles, the back of the thigh. So this disorder, uh, uh, the name of this disorder does not uh, really uh, fully characterize how uh, uh, much it does affect the whole, whole body. And, um, uh, I think that's particularly important for, for people early on in their disease um, who are uh, uh, experiencing weakness that they're trying to uh, understand. Now, um, one of the uh, mysteries is why some muscles are affected and, and, and some are not. Um, so uh, here uh, you see um, uh, the teres major uh, is a majorly affected muscle in the rhomboids, uh, but, but some of these uh, other uh, muscles, such as the infraspinatus, are not severely affected. And you know, that's, that's a million dollar question for us uh, scientists is why some muscles are affected and others are spared. Uh, it, it is uh, a, a real uh, fact of this disease and uh, one of the reasons uh, that uh, scapula fixation uh, can be so successful uh, for individuals. So uh, here we, we see uh, an individual uh, and you can see that his, his left scapula uh, uh, is more prominent um, than the right, which has been fixed, and now he's elevating his arms, and he can't elevate the left much, but he can um, elevate uh, the right quite a bit. And, and that's because the scapula has now been fixed to the rib cage, um, taking away the actions of that uh, teres major and rhomboids, but allowing other uh, muscles, such as the deltoid, uh, to work. So uh, scapular fixation uh, is uh, an option for, uh, for some people with FSH, those who respond to manual compression, who are willing to undergo a large surgery and uh, comply with postoperative uh, restriction, who don't have uh, significant medical concerns, who have normal pulmonary function, and that's really important because you breathe differently after having this uh, surgery. Um, those who have poor sh shoulder function and, and desire for better, uh, um, and whose involvement is limited to the scapular muscles, for, so for instance, have normal rotator cuff and deltoid uh, muscles. So it's really important in this surgery to, to pick the, the uh, best patient, uh, but also to pick the best uh, su surgeon. Um, and you want somebody who has, has done this. Uh, uh, many times you want to talk to people uh, who have had the surgery. Uh, one person that I could recommend is Leanne Curl, who uh, is the orthopedic surgeon for the uh, Ravens. So she has got two very different patient populations. Uh, she sees a lot of people with FSHD, and she sees a lot of football players. 
So let's talk about uh, some other systems uh, that are involved, some non-muscle systems. Uh, one is uh, hearing. So there's high frequency sensory neural hearing loss associated with a severe FSH day. Uh, this is, uh, it originates in the cochlea. Um, the auditory uh, brainstem uh, functions are normal. Um, and uh, we recommend that you have pure tone audiometry uh, in those who are uh, symptomatic or uh, those who have less than a 15 kilobase allele. And um, the, uh, the recommendations include getting a personal uh, hearing aid for a child, a school assist device, a technology, and an individual education plan. Speech can be involved, as, as many of you know. Uh, this is, uh, can be secondary to uh, hearing loss, uh, such as being able to, to hear and reproduce nation, um, or secondary to facial muscle weakness, such as uh, saying vibrate. Um, the recommendations include, again, the audiometry as speech therapy versus an elocution coach, which I think uh, Dan could attest to. Vision, uh, again, uh, more likely uh, to be affected in those who have severe uh, FSHD. Uh, this includes uh, vascular thalangiectasias, that's um, uh, blood, uh, blood vessel growth, such as, as shown here. Um, this can also lead to retinal detachment of microaneurysms, and uh, we recommend uh, a retinal examination with an ophthalmologist um, every two years. Uh, fluorescein angiography, if abnormal retinal examination or family history of Coates disease or Coates syndrome in FSHD. So Coates syndrome is just the, uh, the name for these uh, vascular telangiectasias. And it is uh, treatable with uh, laser treatments. Probably more common uh, than retinal abnormalities are, are corneal abrasions, such as from the inability to fully close one's eyes at night. Um, this is uh, just uh, showing um, a, a corneal abrasion. And um, lacquer lube at night uh, is very helpful. Artificial tears, reflush plus, I would say, plus, plus minus uh, helpful. Uh, some people find it helpful, others do not. And, and punctal uh, plugs are another option. So this individual uh, here with FSHD um, on the top had a lot of difficulty uh, with uh, drying of her, her eyes at night and, and watering of her eyes during the day. She went ahead and had um, in, uh, in, injectables. Um, this could be done with collagen. It can be done also with fat. Um, and uh, in, implants underneath the eye are also uh, very helpful. And uh, this uh, essentially cured her, her issues with her eyes. Uh, Dr. Kofi Bohim uh, spoke uh, last year or, or two years about his uh, experience with uh, FSHD. So you're going to hear uh, more about uh, pulmonary function. I'll just uh, mention it uh, uh, briefly, but um, uh, many people with FSHD uh, do have a restrictive pulmonary uh, disorder. Uh, the symptoms include shortness of breath, especially when lying down or swimming, difficulty sleeping which with new or morning headaches, an inability to take a deep breath or cough, uh, fever, chest pain, phlegm. And one evaluates this with something called pulmonary function tests, which you may have had. It's important if you have it that you have it done with a face mask as opposed to a, a mouth tube because of the, um, the uh, mouth weakness would give you abnormally low uh, values. There are no normative values for FSHD, so what's really important is to follow your pulmonary function over time. Your absolute number probably matters less than what happened to your pulmonary function, for instance, over the course of a year. We can also look at something called your cough peak flow. You can look at blood gas, and sleep studies are very helpful where you can detect low oxygen levels while sleeping. The weakness of facial and mouth muscles may predispose to uh, sleep apnea in addition, uh, the cessation of, of breathing during sleep. 
So things that are important for uh, protecting your pulmonary health are getting immunized, getting your yearly influenza vaccine, get a, getting a pneumococcal vaccine every five years. Um, if you have a low, uh, flow, uh, low cough flow, uh, then it may be helpful to have something that, that helps you cough. Uh, it's called an insufflator, exufflator, an assisted cough. And if you have uh, difficulties, for instance, with your sleep study or very low pulmonary function tests, then you may need uh, assistance with uh, ventilation. You do not need oxygen, and, and that, is, that is a mistake that uh, non-neuromuscular uh, physicians sometimes do. Um, ambulances always do is give you oxygen when actually what you need is the expansion of, of your rib cage and, and your lungs to uh, breathe. And that's uh, a picture there of BiPAP. Um, finally, let, let me t tell you a little bit about uh, bone density. Um, with increased uh, muscle weakness uh, comes increased falls and increased risk of fracture, uh, producing pain, deformity, depression, disability, declining quality of life. Half of people who break a hip never walk again. So how we look at this is with uh, um, a DEXA scan, looking at, at bone mineral uh, density. Um, this is the imaging technique of, of choice. It's easy, minimal uh, radiation. Um, you should uh, have this study done and then have it uh, repeated in the same facility, it, depending on your bone mineral density every one to two years. And that's a picture of Don Burke, who's probably here, one of our great volunteers. Um, so we did a, a, a study of bone density in FSHD. Um, we uh, looked at the DEXA scan where you can um, categorize people as uh, normal uh, bone density, osteopenia, which is low, or osteoporosis, um, which is a, a further decrease in bone density, making one at increased risk for fractures. And um, one uh, scores bone mineral density with T scores, which uh, compares you to the bone mineral density of average young adults at the uh, time of peak uh, bone <coughs> health or bone mass, or Z scores, which comp compares you to the same age. And the lower the score, the greater the risk of fracture. So we found um, that 45% of people with uh, FSHD had normal bone density, uh, but 40% had osteopenia, and 15% had osteoporosis. This was, this was a, a study of 100 people with FSHD, 50 in Baltimore and uh, 50 in Sydney, Australia. So uh, the recommendations are that regardless of your age or strength, uh, first that you check your vitamin D3 levels and correct it, 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 them if, if there's a deficit. Uh, about a third of our patients, uh, FSHD patients, were deficient in vitamin D3. You should get a DEXA scan if you're 65 years or older, if you're no longer walking, or if you're falling and then make uh, lifestyle or medication changes um, can, uh, in, with assistance from your physician. So I just I, I want to end uh, with a, an advertisement. Um, we are um, looking for uh, non-manifesting carriers. So we're uh, we're looking for people who have the 4QA allele but are not um, uh, manifesting any weakness. And um, the estimation is that from 20 to 50 percent of people with the 4QA allele actually uh, have no uh, weakness. And so some of these people are mosaic. Some of them are pre symptomatic but some of them really never de develop weakness. This is one individual um, from our center who you can see has, um, uh, she, she has the 4QA allele. Her sister has fairly uh, classic uh, FSHD. She has a normal smile. Her muscle histology looks normal. Her MRI of, of muscle looks normal. And uh, we're uh, collecting and studying these individuals because you can imagine that maybe they have a, a protective gene or uh, some, uh, some feature which uh, allows them to, to escape the uh, normal FSHD. And if we can bottle that, um, then uh, we'd uh, use it on, on family members. Um, so um, 
This is uh, where I practice at the Kennedy Krieger Institute. It's an affiliate of Johns Hopkins. Uh, I have my telephone number and email uh, address there if you have any questions or uh, like to get in contact with me. Thank you.